Howdy folks! This is the Steampunk Desperado saying welcome to the new year 2023 and let's hope it's a great one for the world in general and for Steampunk in particular. Now I have complained a lot in some of my videos about the lack of respect that Steampunk is getting these days. A lot of the major publishers have stopped publishing it or accepting it. Most of what's coming out is self-published or perhaps very small uh, publishing houses, which is good, and which is definitely good, and some of them are very good. And one of those is the fellow I'm going to be talking about today and the, and the book he released last year, 2022. So today I will be doing The Wrench in the Machine, The Associates of Ishtar, Book One by Bonsart Vogel. the author, Bonsart Bokel. As I said, I've been pretty remiss in my engagements, in my getting back, my checking comments and getting back to people. And I've been rather sporadic about it and I'm trying to do better. That's one of my, of my resolutions for 2023. And so Mr. Bokel has a steampunk fiction channel here on YouTube, which I was entirely unaware of. It's called Radio Retro Future, and it's been around a lot longer than mine has. And he's probably like better plugged in to the steampunk community, especially in Europe, because he's from the Netherlands. His real name is Alex von Hoogstraten. That's a cool name, too. <laughs> but I can see why he chose the cho shorter name as his nom de plume. And so he's been talking a long time on his channel about steampunk, about how awesome it is. He's been interviewing people and so on. And... He has been talking about writing, the art of writing as a writer, how um, the tips he's giving, and some of them are very, very good, like, like show, don't tell, <laughs> which is something that I still struggle with. And a writer writes. <laughs> to, you, don't, you can't say you want to be a writer. You have to write to be a writer. So you have to just start doing it, no matter how intimidating it is. So I appreciate this good advice that he gives on his channel. And... And I'm happy to say that it's a good thing that he has actually gotten into writing and to put some of that knowledge to practice. Now, I assume that, since this is book one, I assume that, the, uh, that there are additional ones to be coming out in uh, succeeding years. And so even though this review is a little late, I think it'll maybe draw attention on behalf of those books that are to come. The Association of Ishtar is this like secretive association that is kind of the backbone of this book. It's, it's a private association uh, in a very Victorian way in that you had these societies, you know, of, of uh, wealthy gentlemen that would uh, talk about philosophy or science or whatnot. And so to the public at large, they seem like a bunch of harmless eccentrics that are kind of interested in the rifts. What are the rifts, you ask? They are interdimensional portals that have mysteriously appeared well, in England and in other places around the world. Now, it's a, it's a concept that you see in a lot of anime, so it's a familiar concept, but of course, there's always a new approach, and the putting it in steampunk is makes it kind of interesting and fresh. What is also interesting about this is that the rifts in this case uh, have become kind of blasé to the public. In some cases, they just they just become tourist attractions. And uh, one, once in a while, the monsters will come out that they'll have to battle. But for the most part, it's a thing to be commercially exploited. <laughs> These companies will send agents in and look for technology that is known in other universes but not in ours, and they will adapt it. They'll bring it back and adapt it for money, which is why that radio, as it's based, as this is based in 1870, why radio is actually commercially viable. <laughs> and I'm not sure what the technology is, if it's like uh, tubes or what. That's a lot of steampunks have this kind of idea, and that you've got this anachronistic technology. For example, the famous and wonderful book, The Difference Engine, uh, by Gibson and Sterling 
in which uh, computers become big in the 1800s because uh, the uh, basically Babbage's mechanical computing engine becomes successful and so they've all got gears and like pistons and so on in them and so this is kind of a similar thing and the actual hero of this book is a cop uh, named David Olbero and he is a policeman in the Dover Police Force in the county of Kent which is like on the coast probably like the closest you can get to the Netherlands <laughs> in, and still be in England and he is investigating he's out investigating this some crimes when this strange female automaton cyborg jumps out from nowhere and attacks him and his partner and his partner is stabbed to death and uh, Obero loses a hand so for the rest of the novel he has to go around with Hook which you find a lot of the a lot of people with prosthetics in this book there's a lot of mechanical arms and legs it's a very steampunkish concept and uh, I'm hoping that Mr. Obero gets a better prosthetic in the succeeding books but in any case he's one of these dedicated cops that has had a rough life and he's kind of you know he's kind of in a funk he's he lives by himself and kind of troubled and at the same time he wants to make a difference and so of course he gets into trouble with his with the authorities when he wants to investigate something that they don't want him to investigate <laughs> and he in, he ends up uh, meeting this strange woman who creates mechanical toys and through her he meets this young girl, kind of an orphan urchin type. She looks very young. Turns out she's 12, probably un undernourished. And her name is Eye Grain. <laughs> and she has two different color eyes, <laughs> which is, you know, another theme that you see now and then for some kind of very strange, it represents a strange and unusual character. And as it turns out, Eye Grain is from across the rift. And she has some interesting skills and perhaps you could call them powers that is because she's from a world where science is kind of like a form of wizardry so Olbero you know takes a shine to her and he he feels very protective very fatherly and so he wants to make sure she's uh, not harmed and that she's very um, that she's safe and all that stuff so he's a good guy and uh, he, in, in the process, he also adopts a three-legged dog, which is, has kind of been falling eye green around, I think. Now, there's some other interesting, some other interesting uh, aspects to this book, which, which make it unique and uh, a bit fresh. Uh, one is the fact that there's this cult, uh, the cult of the Signal, and they are following this particular radio station that has this um, kind of a, I don't know what, this weird pundit who's always talking about this signal, which is some kind of supernatural thing. Maybe it's a little bit like, you know, Jim Jones or something like that. And there are people that are, a lot of people that are following it, maybe a little bit like Scientology. In particular, there's this famous actress called, called Carla Lantry, very, very reminiscent of the famous Lily Langtree from that era and a lot of these people have prosthetics because they believe that human flesh is is like not exactly sinful but you know flawed and that if they become machines they are become more perfect so it's kind of creepy which is good <laughs> which is good for the sake of the story and there's also a thing called a number station now if you're into conspiracies uh, and technology you may have heard of these, then these are real. Uh, there are shortwave stations where some person just sits, sits there reading numbers off. And that's all they say. You know, 123, 515, whatever. And supposedly these are the work of intelligence agencies sending messages out into the field. Well, in this case, in this book, these stations have something to do with the uh, the cult and uh, these monsters that come out and attack people in particular the agents of the Association of Istar and they have numbers you know they are numbered agents you know kind of like James Bond <laughs> so 
you know, they, they read out 123, and what do you know, 123 gets targeted. So they have, so it's, it's a complex novel, and there's a lot going on here, which keeps it interesting, but at the same time, it can be a little confusing now and then. And there, there are a few concepts I'd like a little bit expansion on. For, for example, these monstrous cyborgs, uh, he refers to them as Nictolar, which supposedly is a name that came from a French radio drama about, uh, what was it, about detectives who can read minds? <laughs> That's so intriguing that I want to know a little bit more about it. I don't know if there's any basis in history for that. I haven't gotten to that point. Another interesting point is that travelers that come through the rift, and they call them travelers, uh, they have a limited time to be across into another universe because if they stay too long, they start to decay. They, they start to decompose. And so you have to worry about people like Igrain. You know, what's going to happen to her? Is, is she going to like turn into dust? And it's, it's reminiscent of, for example, his Dark Materials by Philip Pullman, where there's all these universes, but you can't stay across permanently because you get sick and die. And so, in essence, I'd say the pacing is good in this book. Uh, the lingo, the, the lingo is pretty good. Not as British as a lot of British authors could, could do it, but, you know, he's Dutch, it's his second language, and uh, there's some intriguing innovations in this book, which, which make it good, which make me want to recommend it. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to come, I did a small criticism, now I'm going to come up with a big one. The big one is that Mr. Bokel really should have hired an editor. It's really difficult to find your own mistakes. Uh, I know as a writer, and so I always I always have other people checking it. And I also use a um, online service called Grammarly. Uh, well, at least they'll catch all the misspellings that your uh, word processors checker will will catch. But also a lot of word use issues. You know, you use the wrong word in the wrong place. And that was the biggest issue in this book. There was a number of words that were used incorrectly. Close, and, but not quite the same, and easy to make for somebody who isn't a native speaker. And so, and I have studied a few languages, and I would be nowhere as good in any other language <laughs> as, as Mr. Bokel is in, is in English. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could attempt something in German, and I'm sure I would slaughter it. But nonetheless, I think it's important if you're going to, go, going to publish something that it be really clean. And just a couple examples that were the most jarring because they were the most repetitive. First of all, Obero, I know it sounds Irish and it should be O apostrophe Barrow, but instead it's O L apostrophe Barrow. And I just don't understand that. <laughs> I mean, it might have been a mis, mis, com, misapprehension of how Irish names are supposed to be constructed. I'm not sure. But that kind of bugged me. Uh, the other thing that was most glaring was that the leader of the cult, and in general you would call such a person a prefect, but instead he's called a perfect. Now, this could be a pun. I mean, it would be, it would be, like, um, it would be like something from the Hitchhiker's Guide, <laughs> uh, which, in which case... A leader of a cult, well, he's perfect, so therefore that's his real title. He's a perfect, not a prefect. Of course, in the, in the Hitchhiker's, Hitchhiker's Guide, they had a character named Ford Prefect after the car. So that's why I thought of it. But anyway, yes, he it, it definitely needs to hire an editor. And in fact, there's a service, another service, besides you know running it through Grammarly the first time, uh, there's, a, there's another site called Fiverr, in which you can hire um, gig workers to do basic, various things for you, uh, and it's pretty reasonable. I've hired people to do illustrations for some of my books, and, and they've been wonderful. <laughs> and I've also hired editors on there, and they, they tend to do a good job. They're rated by the users, so you get a good idea of how experienced they are and how good they are. And, you know, it might cost, you know, a couple, uh, couple hundred American dollars or maybe a little bit more, but it was well worth it. <clears throat> and let me say that because I like this book, I really hope that this Association of Ishtar
plays out. Uh, if Mr. Bokel would like, like to send me his manuscript, I would gladly go through it for free. <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's easy to republish in Kindle form. Not as easy as pay, in paperback. You always have to pay new fees to, to set it up again, but at least you could do it in, in Kindle form. And uh, have a little bit of a a little bit of a uh, vested interest in there because I, I, for one thing I'd like to be on a show, <laughs> and for the second thing he's me he's meaning this to be a shared universe, and I'd be very happy to write something in this vein if he's interested in pursuing this. So overall, I would definitely recommend this book. It's interesting. It's fun, and with the caveat <laughs> that the uh, that the uh, misspellings and word misuse can be a bit jarring at times. So as far as my gear rating, I'm going to give it 4 out of 5. I'm sorry, I, I just can't rate it higher uh, for, for that reason. And I'm, and I'm quite picky with my ratings, so if I give a, a, something 5 years, it is like dang near prefect. <laughs> so this has been my review of The Wrench in the Machine by Bonsart Bocco, otherwise known as Alex Fun. Hoogstraten, a luminary in the steampunk community with his uh, channel of Radio Retrofuture. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Please like and subscribe because that helps us get out the good, good steampunk word. And I'd also recommend you, you check out uh, the Radio Retrofuture. It's, it's pretty interesting. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.